Hey, what is up everybody? It is Harrison Barron, The Millennial Entrepreneur. And today I wanted to talk to you guys about why the CEO or the business owner makes the most money in a company. Now I know that some of you guys are probably gonna think this video is absolutely ridiculous, but if you are not a business owner, I promise you, you will get some value out of this video. So the topic of the day is why does the CEO make so much money compared to everybody else? I say CEO, meaning CEO and business owner will go with those two combined because typically they're the same person, not always, but typically they are. So why does the business owner make so much money as opposed to everybody else in the company? And we're gonna use people like Jeff Bezos in this example, but they make billions of dollars a year. Billions and billions and billions and billions. So why do they make so much money? And why do they make so much money compared to everybody else? Why does even the small business owner make more money than everybody else in the company? As a business owner, you get the responsibility of doing everything. When you start your company, it is a tremendous amount of work that is involved with being a business owner. There's a lot of things, everything from startup costs to managing the finances to managing the people and building the business. So for myself, for, as an example, I've been in business now for a year and change, just over a year. I don't have any employees yet and I'm kind of thankful I don't have employees, but I'm very eager to get employees. And one of the hardest things that I'm having to do right now is find a really good employee. It's extremely difficult to find really good employees, especially in today's economy and whether or not you like the president, unemployment rates are at an all time low. Because of that, there's a tremendous amount of demand for talent and it's super hard to find people that are qualified for job. And you're probably thinking, yeah, but low unemployment is great for people. It absolutely is. But it's really bad for business owners because a lot of times it makes it super competitive to find a job. Candidates are getting multiple job offers from companies and they get to pick and choose who they wanna work for. Because of that, it puts a lot of stress on business owners because now they have to meet and exceed their expectations in the business. So it could be things like Google where they get food or Yelp or one of these companies where they're getting food and meals, you know, working remotely, all of these different things that are really good for employees and also really good for business owners. But as a small business owner, it makes it super difficult. So when the business owner finally gets that employee after spending hundreds of hours looking for that employee, which he did not get paid for, now he has to train that employee. So he has to hire that person. Let's just say the person's making 50, we'll say $52,000 a year, $1,000 a week. Because of that, it probably takes an employee to anywhere between two weeks to three months-ish to get caught up and trained. So do the math. That could be $12,000 or $2,000 just to teach an employee how to work for your company. That doesn't include the amount of time, energy, and effort that's required to actually teach the employee. So if it's the business owner teaching the employee and the business owner doesn't get paid until everybody else gets paid, has to take the time out of his day to sit down and teach that person. So maybe it's, we'll say a hundred hours worth of training. That business owner is not getting paid for those hundred hours but that employee is getting paid for those 100 hours. Now, it doesn't matter how much time, you know, money that employee makes per hour, let's just make it simple. 40 hours in a week, two and a half weeks on average. You're talking about you know, 2,000 plus dollars just to get somebody trained on the basic level to start doing things at your company. And on top of that, there's a tremendous amount of training that has to go on afterwards. So that employer finally has to recap his money after he's finally trained that employee. He's entitled to that. He's in business to make money. So it takes him sometimes six months or a year to recap all of the money that was spent on that employee. Also, you have to factor in the cost of that employee on the flip side, not just the salary, insurance, compensation, 401k, healthcare if they can afford it. All of these different things that go into having an employee that the employee doesn't actually think about because they just are so used to the process. All of those things add up on the business owner's end. Now that the business owner has that employee, they have to figure out how to make money on that employee. T typically, an employee is replacing the person or 
taking or alleviating a person of responsibilities. So that employee has to take on all of those responsibilities. So for example, if I hire somebody, I don't expect somebody to come in and do everything that I'm doing, but I expect that person to come in and do a lot of what I'm doing to free myself up to do different things like SEO or things that they don't know how to do. Every employee isn't gonna know everything the business owner is gonna know. The business owner is working his way and researching and doing all these different things and he's ultimately the mastermind brain behind the whole operation. Doesn't mean employees can't have input. That guy or girl who is running that company or that's running that company is ultimately responsible for every single little thing that needs to go on in the company to progress the company forward so it can make more money so when a year or two from now when that employee asks for a raise, they can actually afford to pay that employee. On top of that, the business owner is also working on a million other things, like trying to get better insurance premiums so he can save some money and put some money back in his pocket. Working on making the environment better for the employee to get better productivity out of them. Working on building those sales, building that pipeline. Especially as a super small business owner, there's so much stuff that you have to do and filling in those voids and cracks that that employee can't do. For example, if I'm hiring an employee, I don't expect them to know how to video edit unless I put it on my job application for requests saying, hey, one of the required skills is video editing. But if they know how to video edit, chances are probably pretty good they don't know how to post on social media and do a really good job at it, or how to run email marketing. All of these different things that employees will never know. And the business owner doesn't expect them to know, but the business owner has the biggest resume with all of these skills, all of this thing, this, that, and the other thing on stuff that provides value to the business to help it grow. So at the end of the day, why does this business owner make so much money? Well, now they hired this employee, now they gotta figure out how to make more money on that employee. So now they could start taking on a bigger workload. How do they go take on that bigger workload? Are they gonna work more hours and work on sales and this, that, and the other thing? Or are they gonna hire somebody else? Or are they gonna run better marketing? Or there's all of these different moving parts that go into being a business owner. You know, is the finance okay? Is the bank accounts okay? Do we have money to pay salaries this week? Do we need to take out a business line of credit? Are interest rates low? Can I take out a business line of credit and only have to pay back a small portion of it and hold the money for you know two to ten years or whatever it is there's all of these different things that they're constantly thinking about on a regular basis that employees take for granted and they should they're entitled to most of this stuff however that is why the business owner gets paid the most amount of money Usually, the CEO of Walmart makes $25 million. There's no other employee in the company that's making anywhere near that amount of money. But you get employees that are basic entry-level employees that don't think it's fair that he makes so much money and they don't make that much money. He's running all of it. Just because he's not doing the physical labor doesn't mean he isn't putting the things in place to help make your job easier, make the system run better, or anything like that. That's where the complicated stuff gets into play because if he makes a bad mistake or accidentally spends a couple million dollars on a marketing company that doesn't do the right thing, he's out millions of dollars, which is the equivalent of thousands of employees in Walmart. That is why he makes so much money. He's the conductor of this orchestra to make it all play and work smoothly like a well-oiled machine to ultimately deliver you know, better products at a cheaper value to their customers. He has to make sure all of that kind of stuff goes through. And especially these companies like Amazon, who started in a warehouse, you know, Sam Walton doesn't run Walmart anymore, but Amazon where Jeff Bezos was working out of, I think his garage to start off with and then he got a warehouse. With books, you know, now he's worth billions of dollars. He built that company up. He made extremely good educated decisions and he's still, working on building out the processes and not everybody likes Amazon and I totally get that, but it's still his job to make sure that you could do your job so you can get a paycheck. And he gets paid so much money because he's employing hundreds of thousands of people, both directly and indirectly. You know, yes, he's got his employees, but then there's other companies that started up because they sell through Amazon fulfillment. So he's ultimately providing value and monetary compensation to hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people. So why shouldn't he be compensated for it? He built the entire thing. He's entitled to that. So when people say, you know, oh, they shouldn't make that much money, why should they not make that much money? They did all of the hard work already. You're only doing a tiny little fraction of the entire thing. That person, 
worked every position in the entire company. I'm sure there was a point where Jeff Bezos had to get in the warehouse and start doing fulfillment because nobody else could. He did fulfillment when he was a small business. Somebody had to do that fulfillment. You know, building out those systems, building out those operations, making those really educated decisions, saying, hey, what kind of machine system are we gonna get in place to make this a better solution, to get the customer a better service? All of these different things go into the business that nobody ever thinks of, and it's super, super important. That is why why the business owner or the CEO makes so much money. I am Harrison Barron. I am the Millennial Entrepreneur. I hope you guys found some value in this. I do my best to make these videos really good. If you haven't already, smash that subscribe button. Hit the like button. Hit the little notification bell if you want to know when my videos go live. I'd really appreciate it, guys. Share it out with somebody. That's the best way to grow this channel. I'm super dedicated to doing it. I usually or I try not to do things, I try not to dedicate myself to things that either I'm not gonna find value and I happen to really like making these videos and I wanna consistently add more value to you guys. I'll see you guys in the next video. See you later.